thank you so much for being with us. You're welcome. And of course, um, you have our condolences on the loss of your beloved son. How do you want him to be remembered? Um, he, he was a leader. Um, it, Mike mentioned that he was quiet, but um, he certainly led by um, ac his uh, actions. And, um, and he was not one of the me generation. He always was giving. Um, he had been known to um, give the boot to a couple of, um, <laughs> as an officer, if, they, if his guys didn't go out and read to children on the afternoons or whatever they heard from him and uh, we would like him to remember that type of person always giving to other people. Did you have any <clears throat> indication that he would be so moved by September 11th, Mark? Um, well, n he had always talked about joining the military, he had, had tried to get in uh, at uh, West Point and after he tore his ACL that was kind of uh, out the window. Um, but uh, he had decided, uh, you know, he ended up going to Johns Hopkins. Um, and while he was there, you know, even before 9-11, he had decided that he would like to, you know, join the military and become a, a uh, JAG officer is what, what he would like. Would as like parents, to. Was, was that frightening as well as a moment of pride to know that your son wanted to serve his country? I'd say more pride. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't think we were ever really worried, really worried about him. He was, you know, he, he was, seemed indestructible, yeah. mm -hmm. and uh, we were very proud of him. Yeah. How how was he personally touched by September 11th? Um, I can remember the call. Uh, he was in Baltimore at Johns Hopkins, and um, he called home. Make sure, you know, we talked about what had happened, and he commented that one of the fellows in his fraternity. Um, got a phone call saying that Baltimore was one of the targeted areas and, he, and they should get out of Baltimore. And he said to this friend, um, where are you going to run? There's nowhere to run. And I know he took that very, he had a, he wanted to be military before, but now he had a calling and um, it was natural for him to, to make that next move. And of course, no one could have predicted at the time the events that would follow September 11th, the ensuing war in Iraq, uh, the, the double effort in Afghanistan. And yet, even as the danger grew and the controversy around those wars grew, he never lost focus on the fact that he wanted to serve and he didn't, he didn't object to going there if it meant serving America. Not at all. No, right. And you find that we found a lot of people uh, that he served with felt the same way. And even while he was there, he wanted to make he wanted to make a difference while he was there. So just you know, doing his job really wasn't enough. Wasn't yeah. enough. He wanted, and we kept saying, well, you are making a difference just by being there. But he wanted to do other things. He he did uh, you know school supply drives and and you know things like that. For was the, that reminiscent of how he was even on the football field that he always kind of went the extra mile or tried to do a little uh, bit yeah, more? Absolutely. If he had his mind set on it, then he yeah. was always giving two hundred percent. You know that's the way he yeah, was. Yeah, Colby and Brian. I mean, they're both one hundred and ten percent guys. They, you know, it's, if they're not going to do something all the way, they're not doing it. You know, it's just the way he was. Well, I think that's what made the story um, so compelling when I was reading it, is that you got that sense. I didn't know either one of them, but I felt like by the time I put the book down that I did know both of them. So that's why I wanted to share the story with you. I have to take a quick bro break, but when we come back, we will have more about this new book called Fading Echoes, including a conversation with the parents of that second soldier and former football player who was profiled in the book. We're gonna meet the Buckleys right after this. Lynn Doyle's jewelry provided by David Craig Diamonds and Fine Jewelry, Newtown, Pennsylvania. Transportation for It's Your Call guests provided by Preferred Car and Limousine. Thank you for joining us once again, everyone. I'm Lynn Doyle, and this hour we are talking with the author of a new book called Fading Echoes, the true story of rivalry and brotherhood from the football fields to the fields of honor. The author is Mike Sielski, and he is joining us along with the parents of those two football players who later became um, servants of 
the U.S. They were actually in the military and served in Iraq. We lost one of them, sadly, but the other continues to serve his country today. We're telling that story in an effort to show you how life's lessons that uh, we learn when we're young stay with us and shape the kind of person that we become. And Mike, I think I'm, I'm paraphrasing what you say in the book, but that's essentially what your what your message is. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I, I just. I was always kind of curious about the connection between sports and the military, such as there is one. Um, you, you hear military terms in football all the time. Uh, you know, it, it's part of the jargon of the sport, and um, you know, coaches fancy themselves, I think, as generals sometimes. So, here was an opportunity to see, I think, the the best of what you can learn from sports applied in the most dire and challenging of circumstances. I don't think anybody who knows anyone who's been over to Iraq or has experienced it for themselves um, can dispute the fact that it, when you're in that situation, it calls on every fiber of who you are. And you know, I, these two guys, Brian and Colby, I, I think what allowed them to thrive there as leaders and as, as men defending our country was forged in a way on those those football fields in Doylestown. And Colby's parents are joining us, Nancy and Mark Umbrell. Would you agree with that? Was was Colby's character shaped not only by you as his parents, but the lessons that he learned on the football field? It was such an, an intricate part of your lives from what I read in the book. Yeah, I mean, I think that um, some of the things that, you, you know, you learn in football, the 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 hard work, everything that you have to put into it, the leading by example, um, I, mean, I think it, it does transfer. You know, I think it's, you know, trying to get, you know, people to, um, you know, bring out the best in themselves. Well, the book talks about how Colby and Brian uh, endeavored on this journey throughout their lives to find who they were and uh, become the best men that they could possibly be. It's detailed uh, quite uh, eloquently in the new book called Fading Echoes. It's the story of Colby Umbrella, as I mentioned, and sadly he lost his life serving our country in Iraq. But it's also the story of Brian Buckley, and we're joined by his parents now, Connie and Bill. Thank you so much for being with You're us. Welcome. And you when you saw that um, your son and in his journey was being profiled in this book. What was your reaction? I, I was amazed. I remember saying to Bill, did you ever think anybody would write a book about one of our kids? And uh, you know, he's just he's just one of our kids, you know? <laughs> and that, that's what seems so funny that there's actually people that are going to want to read it. And, and when I read it, which I still haven't read the whole thing, to see what he did in the military. I knew what he did in football, but in the military was uh, troublesome and yet making you very proud of them too. I mentioned that uh, some of the lessons that were learned on the gridiron um, were transferred then to to Brian in the military and specifically the Marines, one of the toughest outfits that he could possibly have been part of. What role do you think football played for him? Well, I think it really prepared him for his Marine Corps training. Uh, he played football under one of the <laughs> toughest coaches that you can go to a football camp with and he said that kind of made uh, OCS and some of the other schools he went to a piece of cake so uh, Petten wasn't as bad as